today uh, we are about to uh, just be uh, given a history of how we came to connect so deeply uh, with the American churches, but today specifically with the North Carolina churches and triangle at that. Um, I think there are many of us who have been baptized over the years because the relationship started about 17 years ago. And I think kids who are born into this church and found the relationship growing, you know, and building. And perhaps you've been asking, how did this come to be, isn't it? And uh, as God would have it, he also adds to our number, right? And so probably you've been walking in and you're, so what's the big fuss about, you know, Chris and Tom being in the house and stayed holes and all these people? Why is it such a big deal, isn't it? And uh, as is our tradition, it is the older who tells the stories, isn't it? Because they always know where things begin and where they are headed to, so that they will always get there even through their children. Amen. And so to help us uh, relive history, we have uh, with us uh, Dr. Tom Parkins uh, from uh, the Triangle Church. Then we have evangelist William Aoki himself. And then we have our elder, Anthony Mwanza. <laughs> right. And then we have our elder as well, Elder Chris Bailey, uh, with us this morning again from Triangle Church. And then we have George Irungu himself, as we like to call him GI. <laughs> yeah? For George Irungu, you know. Um, so, probably uh, in the interest of those who have no idea where this relationship started and how did it start, I want to request George to give us a hint, you know, how, how did this come to be? Uh, you know, in a, maybe 30 seconds or so. So, you know George is a pastor, so we have to... <laughs> Okay, uh, you can hear me, eh? Uh, how are you doing? Okay, good, good, good. Let me first say it's an honor to be here and to be here with all these uh, great men. Uh, our lead evangelist, Tauki, Elder Mwanza, obviously with Emos, but also two people, or let me say two families, that have come to uh, love so much and respect so much over the years, almost 20 years. Next year will be 20 years. Uh, that is uh, the, the Parkins and the Baileys. Now, how did it start? Let me say this. There is no question that this is a partnership made in heaven. That for 20 years, almost 20 years, we've been together and we actually, the graph is not going down. We've not platinum. One, two. Great. So the reason why I'm saying this uh, relationship made in heaven is, uh, and I would like to underscore this, is uh, we never reached out to Triangle Church at the beginning. Actually, we are at a point where, you know where you pray, you say God meet us at a point of need? God actually met us at a point of need. It was, there was a transition for many of us who've been around for many years. Uh, in 2003, 2004, uh, the leaders who were leading us then, who were not Kenyans, uh, had to go back to the US. And then now the nationals, that is Kenyans and us, took over to lead. But the challenge is the funding that used to come at that time uh, for very many reasons 
did not continue coming in. So we were there not knowing exactly what to do, uh, but we serve an amazing God. That, that I have to, every time I have to underscore that. Because around the same time, we had no money, we didn't know what to do. We used to have numerous meetings in South Africa. Uh, Anne Marie remembers, we used to have meetings trying to figure out in Africa how do we move forward. And yet, since that time, so many churches would not sustain themselves financially. So, number one, Hope Worldwide managed to get a good funding and we were able to, for lack of a better term, download part of our staff to Hope Worldwide because our wage bill was really very high. Raiola Osanya, Janet Wawero, our late brother, uh, Getao, uh, we have Wycliffe Ndimwa. Most of them now, since some of us were both in both leadership of the church and hope, we were able to do that, that helped a bit, but still we could not manage. While we were in the midst of all that, we got a letter from Triangle. And they say, we would like to send leaders there. That time we didn't even know Triangle Church. And they come, you get to know each other, then we see if it's possible to have a partnership. From Amia nowhere, it just came from out of the blues. We cannot say even any one of us here, because we used to go to South Africa and our focus was totally different. We were trying to fight for the little that was there, but now we got a direct email from Triangle, and that's when, for many of us remember, that's 2004, I think around April, May, early, early 2004. Uh, Dr. Kevin Broyles, Alonzo, I can't remember the third brother, and Mark, Mark Filber. Uh, Aoki is shining today with pronunciation. <laughs> watch our Zoom go end at Tabaki now. So, 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 so that was the first time they landed, and the good thing they they, they could have chosen to stay in a hotel or other places, but they insisted they wanted to stay with us. So that's how the relationship started, so that I don't take too long. Then later that year, coincidentally, there was a, a conference in Chicago. So we were able to go, basically just the two of us, uh, Steve and myself. And we went during Katrina, there was a hurricane there. And even when they wrote Triangle, they notified us that Charlotte was also part of the team that wanted to work with us. So Charlotte and Triangle, they first reached out to us. Then we made now trip, a trip there towards the end of the year. That's when we got to meet, you know, Judge Chris Bailey. Uh, we have a small story about that. And uh, Dr. Parkins, since, since Parkins was the deacon of missions in the west side, no, east side, east side, and Kevin Broyles was the deacon of missions in the west side. So that's how it all started. And uh, all we did was just to nurture what God started through the leadership of those two churches. So Greensboro was a different story, which when we get time, we'll talk about. That, that is definitely inspiring. And I think that is the African perspective uh, let us get the Western perspective of how it started from Judge Chris. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay, so can you hear me? So, so um, uh, Alonzo Felder, Mark Philbrick, and uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, Royals had come over and brought back a very good report, like, the, uh, like Joshua and Caleb. Brought back a good report. Um, but a few of us had, had just been to a Central American country because we were looking for a place maybe for the Triangle Church to focus on. And there was a, a good amount of momentum to focus on a Central American country, which was much easier to get to. You just fly maybe four hours and you're there. And so George comes, 
and he talks to me, and I am not very warm. Cold. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying, you know, okay, George, yeah, great, but... And, and I had been to this Central American country and I brought back a little rock from a, a volcano, a lava stone, and I gave it to him. And so... I want he, a dollar, not lava stone. No. Right, right, right. So, so I, I was not very so excited. Okay. So um, George then, a few days later, went to Greensboro and he met my daughter who was in college there, Mariah, and he talked to her. And George, George is a wise man now, but he was a wise man then. <laughs> and um, so a few days later, my daughter calls me and says, hey dad, you know, I met George Arungu and we talked and all. And then my daughter says to me over the phone, I hear your heart is not open to going to Africa. And when your daughter points out something to you that George planted there, uh, then it really turned that around. Um, and I am thankful to God that George spoke with my daughter, who then spoke to me, and moved that out of the way. So there, there's, in each relationship, there's sometimes a little struggle we go through. Uh, but that even makes it even better in the end. Um, Amos, just just a minute, huh? you see when the changes took place, there was sort of like a, what they used to call the scramble for Africa, you remember? You fight for what is there. In Triangle Church, there were disciples in Triangle Church from other nationalities. So it was not going to be obvious that the connection will happen because there were other disciples in the church who were also fighting hard to get their churches. Uh, partner with Triangle. I think you understand that. So here I am, a whole judge, meaning he plays a significant part in the church, who kept talking to me about Guatemala. Guatemala. I talked to Nairobi, Guatemala. <laughs> so uh, when the opportunity came, Mariah and the rest is history. But I just wanted to know that even that initial time, it was not a walk in the path. You have to make sure you, you pitch your case. And in this case, any stumbling block you have to pray for <laughs> and make sure that you move. But if there's one brother who has been so supportive to us since that time, he's a Chris baby. Obviously, together with the compatins. Uh, his repentance was 360. Okay, no, 180. 360, he went back, eh? 180. And uh, we've just had a great relationship. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Happened at Napigama Coffee, Mingi Sama. I feel very, very encouraged. Just knowing the beginnings. As humble beginnings. But today, we can celebrate a relationship that is thriving, absolutely thriving, because of God's doing. And also because George was faithful to step out, together with Steve, together with Chris, definitely Tom came in at some point, uh, you know, also picked that up, and God was in the details. He always pulled the strings somehow. And maybe at this point, uh, I think it is good to bring in Tom uh, because he has come here so many times. I think it would just be uh, fair for him to share with us what are some of the uh, benefits or highlights uh, that you can remember in the time that you 
um, or courtesy of the relationship that we have. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll have also share our thoughts there. Thank you. So um, the, the question to me sort of starts, um, I think as the relationship has grown, might go backwards in time a little bit later and sort of talk about the original request that got us all sitting here today. But if I was to pick a highlight, um, and I was thinking about this before the questions, um, I was thinking about um, the scriptures in 1 Thessalonians where Paul's talking to and about the church there. Um, in verse 6 of 1 Thessalonians 3, he says to the Thessalonian church, but Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. I want you guys to think of yourselves as the Thessalonian church and me speaking from Triangle. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Now, we, we aren't really very persecuted at Triangle, so I'm gonna skip verse seven. In verse eight, for now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. And my key word to answer Amos' question is in verse nine. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all of the joy? And joy is the word to answer the question, what's the highlight of the relationship with you all? How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you. And so um, the story evolves and over a hundred people from Triangle, you guys are twice the size of Triangle, just so you know. And so uh, over a hundred people from Triangle have come sort of boots on the ground to get to know you because of the joy that we've experienced in hearing and learning and partnering with you all. Um, You know, Triangle is a great place. It's the only place I've ever worshipped God. It's where I was converted, um, where my marriage was saved. It's where my kids became disciples. I mean, it's my entire life. Um, it's where I stayed and found a job because of the faith that I was given at Triangle. Um, but the joy really came when Triangle hooked up with you all. Um, the 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 work of mission um, <laughs> work. That's probably not a good word. It's, I mean, just the, the opportunity to have a relationship to serve um, has been so rewarding to me personally. Um, and then through me and, and from the folks that have come, the, the entire church at Triangle, I would say more than any other noun or thing or event that's ever happened in the 20 years I've been at Triangle Church to shape the fabric and the DNA of the church it's been the Nairobi Christian Church and the relationships. You are our focus. You are our joy in the Lord. We rejoice in the Lord because of you. This is, it's amazing. I, I wish we had more time uh, to just interact and, and get more story. I, I tend to feed on stories. You know, they just build me up in an amazing way. Um, uh, maybe uh, to George, um, you can share with us just a, uh, one of the benefits that you, you know, just received from uh, this relationship that you've had. Uh, you know, I think Thomas shared the joy that he feels you know, as a person already. It's like immeasurable. If, uh, if you are possibly able to see Tom's face, so, you know, it's something deep. You know, but maybe uh, George too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Evans. You say personally? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Personally, I can write a whole book. You know. <laughs> but uh, let me say, as uh, First Thessalonians two says, Paul writing to the church in Thessalonica, he said, "We love you so much that we did not only share with you the gospel, but our lives as well." And uh, if you look at the history of the church just briefly the connection that was there before 2003 was not personalized what you are, what i mean is there was 
the whole of Africa, the whole of Eastern US, giving money to the whole of Africa. And there was no connection like what we have today. So it's after Triangle reached out to us, I think we're actually the first one in Africa to set up a very good connection. This connection was beyond the gospel because they still shared, we learned a lot from them, but also our lives. We've shared a lot, personal lives. So for me, I would say the relationships that I managed to, um, to gain from uh, 2004, as I said, next year will be 20 years, is incredible. I think I know half of the church in Triangle. Uh, we've shared so much. We've gone through many issues before. Uh, they know us very well. Uh, the, all the different struggles and the challenges we went through, they, they were there with us. Even at a time when uh, it was very, very challenging. And as, as Aoki rightly said, if it was not for this partnership, most likely, and I stand to be corrected, we would not be here today. The Triangle Church gave the money that we used to buy this land. That's a hundred percent. A hundred percent. We went to negotiate with Sami Mover. One of those days we met the Wazes. This land, as Aoki said, was actually had issues, had legal issues. Uh, but somehow we took a leap of faith, a few things. It is actually after we made the payment. Whenever we drive here, we talk about when it's after we made the payment, that was, I think, 3.1 million to the city council for the rents and rates of this place. That's when our negotiations with government started. And for us to get the title, the government had to get 15 acres, 10 for Mama Lucy and five for the administration. They were supposed to provide the lighting and the roads, which I don't think they have up to now. But, and then houses came up. So when you see the estate Nazra, we need to give definitely credit to God, but also to the sacrifice that the church in Triangle made to start off. This place had been, it, it was a jungle, it was a bush for so many years because they could not raise that money which we went and we paid directly to city council. And then now that's when the negotiation started. Th those are just among the many, many great stuff that I think uh, personally, I know I'm sharing a lot about the chat, personally great relationships, amazing, amazing relationships. And I have to say this, I'm always not sure whether to share it because someone may say, but you say. It, it is through Terry, Terry seated right here, that uh, my wife and I got to enter White House. So, so, so forgive me if, if it's a bit too personal, eh? but, but, but that made us among the very few. You know, Terry got her friend in school, has a son in uh, secret service, so they organized for us to be taken inside. How many people? You ask me a personal. <laughs> So don't come later to say, George, man, you are prideful. No, he asked me. <laughs> but, but in addition to that, we have Kenya Key that has benefited so many people. Man, there are disciples who are seated here who benefited from the Christmas gifts. Do you remember those quality Christmas gifts you used to have? How many of us remember here? Okay, put your hands down. How many were beneficiaries when their kids' kingdom? Joy, peace, purity, I can see you here. You know, ma many of you guys, mainly because of the sacrifice. And it, it took me so long to understand when they say, we've taught them how to give. While we are the ones receiving all the giving. Uh, you, you understand that, eh? Because, uh, you know, but, but uh, I have to say, all those many great uh, sacrifices that the disciples uh, have made, if Tom and Chris can tell you, when we requested for money for land, the church there was also going through financial challenges. But they had to come together, put their financial needs aside, consider the request we made, go out of their way, and here we are. Land, land was not only bought. 
but they also helped in the construction of the building as just the way many of us here sacrificed and they're up to now almost 20 years down the road they are still sacrificing for us to be able to live better lives as we continue reaching out to the lost in East Africa. So for that, definitely, uh, we can write a whole book. So thank you so much. And obviously, uh, Amy, thank you so much for being there. I know majority of us were able to go to the US in 2019. How many of us went to the US in 2019? You see? We were, over, we were about 40 of us, and Amy, Amy helped, you know, uh, significantly to make sure that majority of us uh, were able to make it there. So for that, I really appreciate. Let me also say, um, Amos, sorry, just the last thing. Eh? This is the, probably the last opportunity I have to do these great people. You know, uh, in, uh, in Judges chapter 6, where Gideon... I mean, uh, God charged Gideon to go, and he said, go with the strength that, go with the strength that you have. We have incredible resources in the kingdom. In 2019, when we were planning to go to the U.S., the issue of visa was a big issue. And one of uh, the leaders, I won't tell you the name, had been denied visa three times, and we knew this time he was still not going to get it. So you go with the strength that you have. And the big strength we have, which is an incredible asset, is having a whole judge in the kingdom of God. <laughs> so what we did, we, we requested that Chris, in a humble way, to do an, a letter with the, the judiciary letterhead. <laughs> and sign as Judge Chris Bailey. And we knew that that is game. That letter was sent straight to the embassy. That brother did not even do an interview. <laughs> he got the visa after being denied three times. So those are the many resources. In addition to the spiritual, uh, you know, uh, nourishment to benefit from them, there are many other great things that we bene benefited from this uh, relationship. And that is what makes the kingdom of God such an amazing place to be. want to uh, get Brothers and sisters, I think um, there are those moments that you need to take a pause and break in. And it's not really a commercial break, but I feel like there is quite some heavy matter coming out. I've quickly realized that every connection starts with God. He orchestrates circumstances to bring it about. But I've heard that when the relationship started, things were not easy, isn't it? So God orchestrated that as well. It was within his purview to deal with the matters. Then I also saw something interesting, that uh, there was communication. Isn't it? There was, somebody had to initiate, and somebody had to follow up. Not because it was easy, but because the need was there for a relationship to be built. And uh, we thank God for Chris and George and Tom, and everybody who was there, at the beginning, you know, to just initiate that communication back and forth. 
And I think those are some of the things we struggle with in our connection, isn't it? You know, uh, uh, we all feel like, mm, uh, maybe not. I'm not sure I should communicate with them, and especially when things are not good, you know. But I've also just learned that it gives great joy to be connected. It gives very deep reward that cannot be expressed in words. Now, there's something that we say that was amazing, that they decided to come with boots on the ground so that they can connect. Boots on the ground means you come physically so that they can connect in, in real, real time. Say real time. Okay, not online, real time. Campus to Kupanyumba. Real time. You've got to get physical at some point. Not with blows, face to face and chat and get to feel this is who I've been talking to. And personally, I think that also wrapped up with me when you guys got physical. I've also benefited, you know, I, largely at that. So I, I'm sitting here as one of those who really inspired and convicted about being connected to one another. And on that account, allow me to move on to uh, the next session. It's kind of like a moment of wisdom. Are you ready for it? All right, now listen up carefully. You ready? I want this one to go to Elder Monza. See when an elder is talking. You listen carefully, isn't it? Yes. In Africa, you bow your head. You don't look at him in the eye. So listen up. Mzee Monza. If you are to give us an advice with regards to this relationship, on to how to make this call. You can be able to get the names and exchange prayers, you know, let them pray for you. Let us pray for them. I know there are a few people that um, we do that occasionally. And even though we are not uh, seeing each other uh, physically, but we can connect in prayer. Yes. You know, let us connect in virtual ways. Uh, we have singles in this church yeah. having yeah. fellowship, virtual fellowship yeah. with the singles on the other side. Yeah. Teenagers. Yeah. You know, learning from one another. Yeah. Married, ma you know, ma married couples, you know, praying together and also having sessions together. We do not have to travel all the way to that place, or they do, they do not have to travel here for us to have those deep relationships. Of course, when God opens a way, it's awesome. It will be awesome for us to travel. It will be awesome for them to come here. But we know it is not easy. But there are many other ways that God has provided for us to take this relationship higher. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, perhaps, Judge Chris, you could also uh, just uh, give us a few thoughts on how we can keep making this strong. Yeah. Um, so, let me let me ask a, a question. How many of you have ever struggled with your faith, with your relationship with God, with um, just how things were going? Yeah. So I think very much connected to what Elder Wanda said is, um, and by the way, we may go through those struggles again. And there's been a couple times when the person I called, uh, when I was struggling, was two brothers that are very dear to me. Can you guess their names? Oh, yeah. Nuguku and... <laughs> You know, when George is thinking, he sort of goes, 
Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, feeling very alone and hurt. And having two brothers, wise brothers, um, on the other side of the world to, to care about you and pray with you and talk with you. So I hope that as the future goes on, there's more of that. Because we need each other. Um, we don't need to stay in silos. Silos, is that a term here? But we need to mix. And we need each other. So I'm very thankful to Julius and George. I call them King George and Julius Caesar. Uh, for just being brothers. You know, forget whatever title. You just, sometimes you just need a brother or a sister. So... Tom, would you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe Tom will also share something. Okay, so yeah, briefly, um, the, um, the question that was just asked, uh, uh, to describe your dream to keep the future, the relationship going. Uh, my dream started, um, of course, you know, dream, God may change a dream, but my dream started after our first trip here in 2006. Um, and uh, Rick Overturf and his family, uh, and Amy and I and my family came here together. It was quite, a, quite an impactful trip the first time either of our families had traveled outside the U.S. Um, so it was, it was eye-opening. I mean, it was very traumatic, actually. Um, <laughs> I, in, in my nice leather shoes, I stepped into a ditch, you know, somewhere in Kayaba, and you know, <laughs> that, that didn't go well in my suit, right? And Elias was taking me around with Margaret. And, uh, and then to honor us with our 11-year-old boys and our girls, they slaughtered a goat at the Hope site and fed it to us. And our children were just appalled. You know, so it was an amazing trip in many different ways. Um, they like killed the pet is what it looked like to them. Very different cultures. But this whole thing started really with George's humility. So we were here in 06. And that's when those sort of, you know, triangles sort of understood what was going on over here. And like in 07 or 08, George, in humility, as a young relationship, asks us for money to buy the land. And that got the whole ball rolling. It was a big ask. Uh, at the time, the churches were divided in east and west. Not really relationally divided, but divided by geography. But it was a big ask because we were sort of asking almost like half the church instead of the whole church. And But we did it. Um, and then, you know, then you guys had this horrible 2008-2009 Udingu and all, the, and all the tribal unrest and inflation went way up and the cost of the building doubled. Um, it was just quite a time, quite a ride that we went through with you guys. And then the Nairobi Christian Academy went from a kingdom kids to a school. And all along we've just been blessed. And this is something we've often told you guys and uh, just Samson the other day said I'm starting to finally understand it. In the relationship, it looks like you are the winners. Um, we give you money, so therefore you win. But that's not the case at all. Um, you guys have a need, we have a need. We see your connection to God as, as vital. We can see it in the way you talk about it, in the way you act, in, the level of the, in, the, in your level of joy that you demonstrate to us when the reasons for that joy aren't as obvious as they might be, for example, in the States. And so you have shown us how to worship with joy, how to live with joy, and we have needed that. Um, when, when, you know, God says, when I give you a trial, there's a chance for maturation and perseverance through it. And you've helped us see that in a way that we weren't able to see without you. So when you needed land, we actually got the better end of the deal, raising the money and going through the sacrifice to do that. And when you needed help with a building, and with, now we're all in. We're like, oh yes, we're helping them with that building. In fact, Elder Gary Hunley said, we were about ready to build a building, and we're gonna make darn sure they get a building before we even consider getting one for ourselves. And that's the, and that's, that was the heart growing in, the, in Triangle Church because of you. 
And then when Christmas came around and Noel Broyles was trying to just make all this happen, we couldn't give enough money to get lollipops and just Christmas presents. And then COVID, no problem. Church, these guys are hurting, yes, money for food. And uh, uh, Charles was sharing with us that the fun it was to be able to hand money for rent and food. That was our, we were the ones getting the, the, the reward there, the chance to give. And I just want to share, this is sort of the, sort of the reason, quote, quote unquote, we're here today is because we have some great news. On. Uh, continuing on with the joy that we have because of you. And so we've enjoyed watching this building go up and you guys are a model. Just like in Thessalonians, when they say, you are a model for all the believers in Africa. You're a model for mission work in America. In what you've done, because you've done this on your own. You've generated a school, you've staffed it with principals and educators. The, the area around you has seen it, and you have 593 students in that school. It's amazing what you have done. And so then, the, and then, uh, we gave some money a while ago and it got lost. The bank went bankrupt and the money was gone. And we're thinking, well, that's the end of that. That well, that's that's a, that's a that's a painful loss. And no, that was just our lack of faith. Turns around, turns out that the the country changes its laws, says you've got to do this JSS stuff and blah blah blah, and you've got to be accredited, and we need more space. And it comes the triangle and we said, I think we can do this. And it is so easy to raise money for your children and the children around here. And so as of last week at Triangle, we raised enough money to pay off the loan for the fourth floor and to completely pay in full the construction of the fifth and final floor of the Nairobi Christian Academy. So amen. Oh wow, that is awesome, Amen. that's amazing, thank you Tom, it's good that uh, you started on that last question because it's almost like we need to just pray and go fellowship and have a good time, you know, it's amazing, uh, but also we know that God speaks through each and every one of us, so maybe um, I request um, uh, William and um, Elder Monza and also Chris. Just going forward, what dreams would you have for our relationship uh, as churches? Thank you. Um, I see the relationship uh, growing, and uh, I know it's been strong in Nairobi, but I see it growing across East Africa. I see it moving, I see our brothers and sisters not only visiting here, but coming in going to Kampala, Uganda, uh, going to the coast region, uh, in Mombasa, Dar es Salaam, uh, because what comes in, of course, yes, and uh, all of this that uh, we see here, and the great, beautiful gift uh, that uh, Thomas just presented uh, to help us here, but it percolates and goes and touches the other churches as well. And uh, I see it growing. Uh, beyond where we are, uh, to even those locations and these connections that uh, even uh, uh, Chris and Mwanza are talking about, and having partners, will go beyond Nairobi uh, so that uh, North Carolina really connects with East Africa in a great way. Thank you. Yeah, um, for me, my dream, I think I shared that. Uh, a bit of it when I was talking, but I want to see, uh, like for example, we, we all know Bernard and Liz Diora. Yes. They are currently in a triangle, and they are doing very well. Their children have grown, they are married in the church. We all know uh, Tawelde and Malinda. They left here, they went to uh, North Carolina. That is a triangle church. So I'm looking forward to many of us. When you think, oh, that chance comes, you know, I want to relocate. Then your first choice is triangle church. Come on. Come on. Why? Because it's like your home. And also, 
for the brothers and the sisters in uh, North Carolina that Kenya, when they are going for holidays and any other whatever, that Kenya will always be first priority so that we can be able to make uh, that board more strong. I look forward for our children here to get married over there. Come on. You know, yeah, so I, I dream, I dream, you know, that things, these things will come true. Thank you. Amen. Um, Jesus said, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also, right? Wrong. Jesus did not say, where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And my prayer is that we just keep placing our treasure in each other so that our hearts will be there. Um, we except maybe Amos, everyone on this stage is closer to their date of leaving this world <laughs> than they are to the day they came into this world. And um, uh, I hope that there's a lot more laughter, yes. joy, yes. and when we hear that one of the other has gone on, that there's a lot of joy and smiles and laughter. Um, I had to save George for last because 30 seconds might not be enough. <laughs> so, so just, just your dreams for our relationship uh, with uh, North Carolina. You know. Uh, thank you, Amos. I think. Um, I think, okay, we will, I, I pray that we'll take the connection to another level. And I know some years back, one of the ideas we had, which uh, our lead evangelist, Aoki, will, could consider, was to have joint service. Uh, that helps us connect better. Because with the technology now, there's no reason why we cannot have a joint service. It was a suggestion then, which was very expensive at that time if you remember that, but I know we can pull it off now with uh, technology, where we have our service late at around five, you have your service early, have someone do communion in Nairobi, have a song leader in uh, North Carolina, uh, preaching in North Carolina maybe, uh, you know, sharing where people see, because you, we have the screen, and I know this could very easily happen. But also besides that, the, the long-term idea, if you look at the way things have happened, we started up to 2003, we were a big block of Africa. Then we broke it down to East Africa, the connection with uh, North Carolina, uh, specifically Triangle, uh, Charlotte, and uh, Greensboro. But now we have churches, in, uh, we are planting churches. We have Kisumu, we have uh, Eldoret, we have the church that was planted. Uh, Ahenda was in uh, uh, Barara in Uganda. So, and then we have also smaller churches in North Carolina, you know, which are there, the Asheville, Wilmington, Fayetteville, uh, all those churches. So if we can also have connection now breaking down to that level where we still work with uh, that, it helps those churches also to grow better and for them to connect better. So those are some of the future ideas I think as we move forward could help now elevate this relationship uh, to a level that we believe will be able to help both of us uh, to reach the desired uh, dreams. So 30 seconds.
Amen, amen, amen. Um, with all that wisdom, honestly, I think there is no need for me to say any other word on it. We have heard it. We have seen uh, the real people who are there, who are involved, and who are actually dreaming for us. Because some of these things, uh, while they are said, it might sound that they will do it. But can I tell you a secret? We will do it. Yes. Amen? Yes. We will do it. We have a team of guys who are, you know, we are now in our early 30s, early 40s. See, Chris said a very powerful word. It sounded funny, but it is real. It is real. You know, our time will come when this bench will not be sitting up, we'll be sitting back there. And some of us will be sitting up here. And some of the dreams that Chris is talking about, George, Mwanza, William, Tom, it is us, especially that, that this side. You know this side, it has a specific membership. <laughs> so when you wake up, you'll see them. Um, we want to pick up that dream and make it real because we are the gadget generation, isn't it? We can fix up that service in minutes and let it work. We can get to have pimples. We used to have, you know, to organize for pimples across the globe and all that. But now it's even better that we can actually be able to speak directly to parents of the pimples that you might be having. That's amazing. You can date across the globe. That's amazing. You know, and let me tell you, I have had an opportunity to visit my brothers' and sisters' homes in America. They're not rich. They're just kind and sacrificial. Amen. And so even for us, amen, amen. even for us, um, I know we had a big team go over in 2019. But I always believe that where there is a will, there is a way, isn't it? According to your faith, it shall be done. Even us, we want to organize, isn't it? And go. Yes. I don't know whether they have a mokuru there, but <laughs> we just want to go and see where are our brothers and sisters preaching the gospel of Jesus. How is the environment? You know, and it just changes your mind. It changes your heart. It gives you a joy that, that surpasses all understanding. It's, it, it, it relieves you of your problems and gives you a focus, just as Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonica, that whenever he thinks of them, there is something that happens in his heart that is beyond the jail cells, that is beyond the problems, that is beyond the challenges, and that is the joy of being united in Jesus Christ. Amen. And having said that, I want to request uh, Elder Chris to pray, and then I will invite uh, um, uh, Samson to come and do the announcements, uh, and more, but today, if there's anything we want to do, is to have a great time of fellowship. I know we've talked a lot about us and North Carolina, but even among us, even, that is why we come together, you know, to just connect with each other in a special way. You never know, and let me say this, you never know who God will put in a strategic position for your sake. And a simple hug can open those doors. So today is a day of connection. Please, yes. Our, our dear, our dear our dear God and Father
continues to be a good day to worship God. Thank you for uh, each part uh, in the Nairobi Church and all the churches in East Africa. Thank you for the hearts and people in the Triangle Church. We can be knit together. God, we thank you. We did not um, create this partnership. You did. We only uh, stumbled into it. And um, God, you have been faithful. Help us to be faithful to the trust you've given us. Uh, thank you, God, for the fellowship we have. Thank you for the friendships and the laughter. Uh, God, thank you for uh, brothers and sisters here who teach us to dance even though we don't know how to dance. So maybe we need to stay together, God, so they can teach us to dance. Uh, help us to be more like our brothers and sisters here in Kenya to have more joy to um, rely less on things but more on you, God. Thank you for um, Jesus who is the beginning and the end who died for us who we would not even know each other's names but for Jesus and his message of peace and salvation and forgiveness and purpose in life and just God, thank you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.